This life insurance brand has led two lives this year. First as Eagle Life Insurance and now after being acquired by Bantan Financial Holdings as Bantan Life. Joining me is its head of marketing, Akhil Almeida. Hi, hi, Akhil, and welcome to the Head Turners by Impact and Ephraim. Hi, Nita. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. <laughs> so tell me, uh, what is the biggest transformation that the brand has undergone since the change in identity? So I would say for us, really, it was the, the identity change itself uh, was, was a significant transformation for us. And, uh, you know, uh, having been in India since 2008 as a life insurer and having been the first life insurer to really take uh, a product like term insurance and, you know, uh, build our entire core identity around it uh, mm -hmm. as we were, uh, kind of evolving from that was a huge shift for us. Uh, and now as Bandhan Life, you know, this is something that we, you know, that we're really looking forward to because uh, the excitement that we've had Right, uh, both internally when we talk to our, you know, all of our teams, um, you know, all of our stakeholders, as well as the interactions that we now have when we go out into the market, have all been extremely positive. And uh, there is a lot of, uh, I think, positive goodwill that's come out of it as a result of this transition and us now being part of the larger group. Uh, mm -hmm. We've also seen, uh, uh, we, we've also had a lot of, I guess. Um, uh, positive curiosity about the brand, about where it's heading, you know, and you know, how is this going to in, uh, impact the kind of work that we do. Uh, so, uh, I would say, or, or, you know, for, uh, for the most part, it has been, you know, uh, a really exhilarating kind of ride, but we're still, I think we're still really at the beginning. This is much, this is like a foundational year for us, kind mm -hmm. of set up the brand, uh, mm -hmm. make it more well-known. Um, the Bandhan name is already well-known, uh, well across the country, but really having a life insurance brand as part of the Bandhan group is now just allowing us to become a more full budget financial services, you know, uh, group. And that's something that we're really looking, uh, you know, very excited about building on this. Fabulous. Now, Bandha, Bharat Ki Udhan Bandhan say that's the new message that I like, right? Yes. And, and it has a big focus on inclusivity and empowerment in the realm of uh, life insurance. Yes. So, I, you know, I, when you talk about inclusivity, um, you know, I, I've seen your competitors like uh, Future Generali, which managed to launch plans for the LGBTQIA couples. Uh, what would be the section of society which uh, Bandhan aims to include, which wasn't there before or, or did not have enough representation? Well, I think that's a great question. Eva. So, I mean, when you think about it from the perspective of India. I think as marketers, what one thing we like to do is, you know, we like to create cohorts, segments. But when you look at the insurance, like the financial services landscape across India, nearly everyone, today about 95% of the population of our country doesn't have adequate life mm -hmm. right? Uh And that's virtually everyone in the country barring, you know, a very select few. Right? And this leaves millions of families to, uh, in, in the country today just, you know, very vulnerable to financial insecurity. And when we were really trying to, uh, you know, figure out what would be our place in this place, we said, you know, actually the opportunity is huge. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, when we said that, okay, fine, 95% of the population is uh, doesn't have adequate cover, we saw this not just as a challenge for the industry, but, you know, personally as a brand, this was our duty to help. And if you know anything about Bandhan's history and really its roots, right? Uh, uh, this was something that kind of, uh, you know, tied in very well with, you know, the kind of organization that we wanted to build. And um, we'd spent the last few years really, really focusing on uh, building out our digital capabilities so that we are able to bring insurance uh, and make it accessible to more and more people. And we said, you know, what better thing for an insurance brand to do? If we can make insurance accessible to everyone, right? Yeah. And especially life insurance, which is, uh, you know, typically a conversation that people like to, they're not very, they're not, they're not open to having conversations about deaths in this country, right? We prefer to be, they're very, they a very optimistic race and optimistic yeah. culture. Uh, but how do we turn something like, like life insurance, which is essential when it comes to financial mm -hmm. security, from something that people have paid into something that they reach for, right? Uh, so we were really like 
uh, having we had a lot of debate internally within the leadership team and really we said you know our mission at the end of the day is to ensure that no one is left unprotected right mm-hmm. uh where there was fear earlier right the fear of talking about the unknown the fear of talking about you know uh, death we want to turn that fear into security when there was uncertainty right mm-hmm. uh we want to turn that into certainty certainty of the fact that you know your loved ones will be taken care right. so uh really what we're trying to do at the end of the day is ensure that you know uh life insurance is not something that people avoid it's something that they actually reach for and our you know our brand promise you know uh, bharat ki uran bandhan se you know, people keep asking you know referring it to re- referring to it as a tagline to me it's not a tagline a tagline is fine you know from the perspective of a campaign but for mm-hmm. us this is the promise that we stand for as an organization it's the promise to everybody that we serve that we are going to help you secure a better future for your family so that's where bharat ki uran bandhan se comes from very very interesting and uh, i from what i understand you are looking at a rather aggressive uh, growth strategy and uh, yes. i read somewhere they're planning to recruit 1000 employees across the country tell us about which geographical parts of the country is would be your target market i know uh, you're trying to look at it holistically but i'm sure when you start with there must be a few markets that you really want to tap yeah so obviously bandhan as a uh, as a business has its roots in the east we have traditionally been very strong you know uh, in the eastern part of the country and really that's where we will be starting to already have Uh, a significant presence there, and we want to build on the back mm-hmm. you know, uh, of that distribution network. And we will expand as a bundle group also expands, uh, you know, uh, into different parts of the country, north, west, and south. Right. So, but our initial focus is going to be, uh, you know, in the eastern part of the country, uh, which uh, uh, is also where you will find a significant portion of people who are, un- you know, who are who are not as well insured as they ought to be. Right. um so uh, if you take take something like you know i was talking about earlier about you know 95% of the country is insured who's the 5% who are right mm-hmm. typically the 5% who are are going to be your salaried individuals right mm-hmm. uh, these are people who have pay slips access to bank statements you know at the click of a button you know they have all the paperwork that's required but it's the self employed the people who really form the backbone you know of a large part of india's economy uh there are the people who don't necessarily have that access and maybe for us it was about bringing out you know uh, features or benefits that will enable them to make to buy life insurance as easily if not more easily than someone who has you know mm-hmm. who is a salaried individual yeah. right so uh really those are the those are the areas the trust areas uh, as we see it um uh, another area for us and this is Well, we'll be starting in the east and going through the rest of the country. Another area for us that we'll be looking at is uh, uh, women in the household, right? The homemaker today, uh, you know, does a significant amount of provides a significant significant amount of value to her family, right? mm-hmm. uh, and uh, this is also the person in the household who's most likely to be uninsured, right? When a family loses a homemaker. right mm-hmm. it is a significant loss for the family emotionally yes but also financially because while you know we might not be you know people of a certain generation are used to seeing their mothers and their sisters working at home right not mm-hmm. necessarily the you know uh, earning members of the uh, or of that family and to a certain extent this you know things are changing positively and that's great but to a certain extent you will still see this you know being prevalent in certain strata of society uh mm-hmm. in certain regions of the country so uh, in places like that when there is a loss uh really how you know how does the family really come up from there you know on the you can never really no insurance product is going to help you uh, mm-hmm. you know deal with the emotional loss of losing a loved one right mm-hmm. but really if we can step in and play a role there and at least you know uh, leaving the financial burden right uh that comes from that because imagine you mm-hmm. know uh, if you are if you are a husband and you are the chief wage owner of your house of your household and you know the love of your life is suddenly you know suddenly pass away what happens in an institute who takes care of children right if you have other dependents like maybe your parents or her parents who takes care mm-hmm. of them right you need to now start making uh, you know uh, start catering to the needs of everything 
of you know all of those loved ones in your family uh, uh, and it's hard to do that okay mm-hmm. you can't just say okay fine i'm going to quit my job and spend all my time here okay. really and so the, that these are the kinds of segments that we're looking at when we're looking at you know the underinsured and the unpenetrated self employed mm-hmm. is a huge one they are the ones who need it the most they are the ones whose incomes tend to be a lot more you know uh, cyclical right um, they don't get a regular paycheck in the end of the month Right. So they they deal they deal so with a lot of right. financial uncertainty, and then you have so, you know another segment like housewives, so homemakers. Mm-hmm. So, so women women is an important segment. Yeah. Very interesting. And how will you look at uh, you know reaching out to these people? Is it going to be a direct channel route or through insurance brokers? I mean, how are you going to leverage Bandhan? Well, our, our strategy with Bandhan is going to be multi-channel. Uh, uh, so uh, yes, with Bandhan we will have. Uh, Obviously, the distribution leverage that the bank that you know that the bank group gives us and that's going to be a very mm-hmm. key, very strategic channel for us. Having said that, though, uh, you know we have spent the last few years really building out, building out our uh, our distribution muscle uh, mm-hmm. with other partners. Think mm-hmm. of uh, think of aggregators. Think of NBFCs. Really, today with the kind of Growth in financial services that we are seeing across the country. Mm-hmm. Uh, really, uh, customers are looking at their financial services provider, whoever that may be, to give mm-hmm. them more choices. I might come to you for savings, right? But then mm-hmm. I always. But if you introduce a, if you introduce to me the concept of uh, or the idea of investing or the idea of insurance, I'm willing to have a conversation with you. about that because we already have a relationship so we are already trusted there is trust there there is trust so mm-hmm. for us really it's about being able to cater to the customer at the touch point that they are already where they already have an established you know uh, and, and, level of uh, trust so okay. really uh, going through so when i say multi channel it is about that it's about being using our own networks like the bandhan network but also using the networks of our business partners Uh, you know whether they are in the NBFC space or the aggregator space, uh, you know, or any other spaces that uh, there may be, there may be payments things like that, so that we are able to kind of provide customers that choice. You know, yeah. should they have need. Right. And what would be your marketing mix? So the marketing mix is really something that's, uh, you know, uh, that's governed by who is who is it that we're trying to reach. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I when I talk. Uh, the language of bandhan today really there are two sets of stakeholders on the one hand there is the consumer and for the consumer really it's about uh, we use all channels where we believe the consumer is going to be a open to the messaging we uh, you know uh, have some likelihood of conversion right so it's a combination of both traditional media channels right mm-hmm. as well as below the line where a lot of conversations happen because Uh, you know, uh, today insurance is the kind of product that is sold through consultation. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's not some. Uh, most people today, when they buy insurance, really there is a, there is an element of consultation that happens before the product is even bought. Even if I go onto an aggregate aggregator today, one of the mm-hmm. first thing they try to do is you know get your contact details so they can have a conversation with you and really figure out what is why is it you're buying insurance, like, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. What is the reason? So that. Because you, as a customer, may have questions around really how much life cover do I need? What sort of product? There are so many products out there, right? Which mm-hmm. the product is right for me, right? and that requires a conversation. So a lot of below the line uh, marketing efforts will be there as well to both educate the seller so they are able to, you know, uh, provide the right information, yeah. provide mm-hmm. the right information to the product uh, to the consumer, uh, mm-hmm. and at the same time really help them differentiate in the sea of products. Or so the offers that are out there. How to differentiate one versus the other? So below the line also becomes important. Lastly, I mean not lastly, but then you also have all of the digital channels mm-hmm. because uh, as India becomes more and more digitized, right? What's going to happen is people are at, are going to start looking for are already looking at digital as a means at least to gain that basic information, right? Mm-hmm. Before I have a conversation today, I'm more like I'm more likely to do some amount of research. Uh, mm-hmm. About it, and that research could be very basic, like simply typing in a brand name or a product name and saying, "Okay, fine, what do they have for me?" And then scrolling that, or saying, "Okay, fine, I just want to give me the contact number for somebody I want to talk to." 
digital becomes the touch point so then uh, it's going to be a combination of traditional below the below the line as well as as digital and really we what we do is we tune the media mix depending on the customer segment okay. so if i'm trying to sell say for example a savings product which is goes to a more traditional sort of audience right mm-hmm. then really i have to think about what their need is mm-hmm. right but if i am trying to sell uh, you know an investment based product right uh, there typically the kind of buyer you have is a little bit savvy right uh, mm-hmm. has a little bit more financial sophistication so in mm-hmm. cases like that really uh, i might it's not like i will avoid traditional channels but maybe the role of a non traditional channel like a digital might be slightly have a slightly higher weight right uh, yes. so really it's about tuning the tuning the medium mix to the to the segment that Super. You know your your MD and CEO, Mr. Satish, were mentioned last month that you're expecting a hundred to two hundred percent jump in new business premium. Uh, of course, it's on a low base at this point. I uh, just wanted to understand what is your current market share and what is the target for twenty twenty five. We don't really have a market share target for the year. Really, what what we're looking at is more of a five year or a five year horizon where we want to be, you know, among the top ten insurance brands. Uh, in the country and uh, really for us that is going to be a significant jump for us really which is why something like the 100 or 200% growth is something that we intend that we probably see year on year so the base will be small now but as the base grows i don't think the drive or the ambition is going to be diminished by any sense it's really so about as the base grows we still want to maintain you know that uh, you know you know rapid fire rate of growth mm-hmm. <laughs> And then anyway, you mentioned about how digital is an important part of the marketing mix. Uh, now, to what extent will be the focus also on uh, you know online sales was uh, or end to end sales via the digital medium, uh, you know, versus the traditional way of doing it? And what is the breakup looking like currently? I mean, what percentage of sales are happening online at this point? So today, if you look across the country, across the industry, right, digital is an important channel, not just from a sales standpoint, but also to build that basic awareness and understanding of the product. Mm-hmm. Digital is a great medium when it just comes to education about the carrier, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you can just anybody who does a Google search around like some basic query, like you know what kind of insurance, life insurance do I need, or how much life insurance do I need, you will find mm-hmm. that there's a lot of content today that's available to help guide, you know, uh, guide the consumer. uh and for us really when you're looking at digital like i said yes there is the conversion path but but there's also the basic education path i think that is the first hurdle that life insurers that is the category we really need to cross like i said mm-hmm. earlier that, you know life insurance is something that people tend to avoid right, right? Uh, so many in the in the, in the industry or even outside consider this a push product why because i need to cross the issue that you need it right mm-hmm. so the role of digital is vital in educating the consumers i think that's the you know uh, that's a really, that, that's a really important thing that gets missed out you know very often in conversations about what is what is digital really once you're educated about the categories when you're more likely to have a conversation there digital plays two roles on the one hand it can be consultative so for example you know uh, helping you kind of narrow down what product or category might be right for you given the life stage that you are in right uh, two is the language of insurance is not necessarily something that is very consumer friendly mm-hmm. right if you you have a life insurance policy right if yeah. you open up the documentation and if you try to read it, you will realize that okay fine it's couched in a lot of phrases that you don't use in your everyday conversation right and think of how challenging this is going to be for someone for whom english could be a second or a third language mm-hmm. right it's so for them really the role that digital plays there is how do i help you decide you know mm-hmm. can i convey to you very very simply mm-hmm. you know what you know what product you need okay do it in, in in a language that you can understand and help you make better decisions in better choices right once you've decided mm-hmm. what for to buy then the role of digital moves more into conversion which is mm-hmm. where we're talking about okay fine how we making the buying process you know as slick and as seamless as we possibly can right so uh, on the one hand uh, you know people have you know people have been used to this idea of submitting paperwork 
right? Today, if you sign up for almost any digital platform, even if some of the new ones, uh, they will ask when you are doing your KYC, right? Typically, mm-hmm. I don't know if you had any experience with with this in the past, but you know, typically, even if you are doing your KYC digitally, they will ask you to take a photo of your Aadhaar card, your PAN card, okay, mm-hmm. and scan it and upload it onto the app. Mm-hmm. Right? It still requires you to deal with a piece of paper. Right, you need to take it out of your wallet or wherever it is. Take a photo, upload it onto the app, then hit submit. Uh, it's an improvement, but it's still not as seamless as it could be. And this is where digit can really kind of play a role here. So, what if I could just enter my Aadhaar card, I just enter a PIN card, okay? And then using just consent-based uh, mechanisms, I'm able to run the entire KYC just on the back of that number itself. Mm-hmm. What if right. I could just use uh, a video selfie for KYC? Right, mm-hmm. where simply like you turn your camera, you record a video for 15 seconds, but you don't have to deal with any piece of paper. The device in your hand is everything. Mm-hmm. Right? And on the base, on the back of that, on the basis of the video selfie, and we use algorithms to kind of uh, uh, do a lot, uh, you know, to do a lot of uh, deep analytics. Uh, 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 we all and you combine that with you know uh, some sort of consent-based identification, like an Aadhaar or a PAN uh, or a PAN card. We are able to connect a lot of the dots in the back end. Mm-hmm. So the consumer never really has to like see or face any sort of uh, hurdles in their journey. So this is so digital will help you from that perspective. Mm-hmm. Help you make sure that the, the person who is applying for it is genuine. Uh, you know, also then what kind of assistance can we provide in the journey? If you have a question mm-hmm. in the journey, how do I know if I'm entering if the information I'm entering is you know is the right information? Right. You know, I, I read recently was this is that's like great uh, CX at your end uh, at play. I was reading uh, Havas's recent report on CX index, and I think the office that concerned Bandhan Bank was one of the top financial players in the country as per that rating. So I guess even Bandhan Life is not going to be too far behind. So yeah. <laughs> that's, that's that's amazing. Uh, you know, uh, another thing I wanted to ask you, uh, Akhil, is you know, LIC's market share has gone up. Uh, and it currently stands at around what sixty five percent. Basically, it's it's higher than all the private players combined. It has been for a very long time. Now we all know that it has an unparalleled uh, network on ground across the country, which is delivering results for it year after year. Mm-hmm. Now, can any amount of digital focus come even close to matching that? Do you think that's achievable in future? With a very, very smart digital push or do you need to continue with that on-ground uh, channel and build that more comparatively? So I think when it comes to marketing, uh, really the first thing we have to do with me, with me as marketers really think about marketing is understand very deeply who is in the better. Right? Boardroom conversations like tend to be around okay, what channel are you doing? What do you come to it? And these are the things that kind of maybe take up uh, some time and attention when we're discussing marketing initiatives. But really, the consumer lives in the world. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, and at the end of the day, you have to figure out what is the what is the best way to engage in business person. Whether mm-hmm. it is digital, whether it is traditional, whether it is word of mouth, some other. Really, the role of marketing is to be able to understand, get insight on the customer, figure mm-hmm. out really what their relationship is with money or with. Uh, you know, uh, with categories like insurance, then try to identify ways and means in which to positively influence them or dispose them to its brand. And LIC, like you mentioned, I think has done some phenomenal work, first of all, in just driving up insurance penetration in this country. Mm-hmm. But having said that, I think there's a tremendous amount of help to do. Even if everybody retains all of their market share today, there is still a huge amount of unexplored country when it comes to where this industry can. So there is growth for all players. It's not just it's not growth at the cost of one another, but this is more about growing the growth, growing the entire sector, the entire category. And like I said, if ninety five percent of people don't have adequate life insurance, that means even those who have it mm-hmm. right uh, today are relatively underinsured. So that's one sort of growth. This is the sort of growth is people who don't have it. Who never had access to it, or who found it too difficult, you know, uh, to get the right amount of coverage, and therefore really providing uh, products or services that kind of fulfill them. 
And tell me uh, one last question: What are your most popular products plans, and uh, which are the promising products you plan to launch in the coming uh, months? So, in the past, we have traditionally been seen as a term insurance player. Really, that was the strength area for us. Uh, and uh, you know, while that will remain, you know, one of our core products, I think. what you will see now in the future is a lot of expansion into the other product categories right uh, so savings as a product vehicle is something that becomes more important for mm -hmm. the investments uh, in the uh, unit link products again becomes another category that we will be expanding into as well and you know within these three categories you have term you have savings investment thing products so we you're covering the broad gamut of what you can do Mm -hmm. either i'm looking for basic protection i'm looking some for some sort of uh you know uh savings component because i'm looking for it as you know just not financial security but also looking for a little some additional return out of it uh or if i really want to do something that is i'm looking at this as a means to grow wealth for the future right so it's not just security but also really as something that can enable me to kind of uh you know to grow my wealth purpose we mm -hmm. uh we will be playing up you know in all three categories and we'll be a I mean our products that again tuned to the audience that we're trying to serve right mm -hmm. uh, uh, so it's not about really coming out with something that nobody has ever mm -hmm. right maybe it's more about focusing on what is it that consumers need where are the gaps how can we fill those gaps in a meaningful way right and then we use whichever channels are relevant to the customer there is okay. on the ground whether it's digital whether it's uh, you know through any other means i will make it simple the, the goal is are you making it simple and easy for people to understand to buy to service and to pay pay that so is is there going to be any uh, expansion into other categories like in health insurance or accidental insurance or all of those in the coming years so the way that insurance is governed in india uh, really uh, the it's it's a separate entity right you cannot have a life insurer who is also be yeah. health insurance right so uh, in that sense uh, for now you will be sticking to the life insurance uh, category but as and when you know uh, if, if if regulations do evolve of course that will be an, you know that will definitely be an interest area right uh because again uh as india you know kind of econ grows economically you are going to have greater need cost of healthcare is going up across stuff you know people want to move from the two wheeler to the four wheeler from the four wheeler to a bigger four wheeler whatever all of those products also need to be you know uh, uh need to have some form of insurance as well so there's definitely scope but today i think we are bound you know Uh, by the regulatory framework, so uh, but I think even then, having said that, there is a lot, a lot of opportunity for the sector and the country. Fabulous. So, like you mentioned, this is your foundational year. So, uh, hope you do uh, so well that you know, we've actually succeeded in uh, expanding the market overall, and of course, uh, rise in that market share as well. Thank so, you. I really thank appreciate you. that. I mean, I think for us, really, what would be uh what would be really great is if we can actually see more and more people who need life insurance and now right more and more people who were avoided in the past now able to understand what life insurance can do and how it can really create a financial safety net for them and their loved ones really they start they they they, they they're more open to having a conversation right True, true, true that. But, uh, yeah, all the best to you again, and uh, thank you so much for speaking to us. And thank you, Nita. It's been really wonderful, and thank you for having me.